<laughs> Welcome, Dr. Aton Stein. Welcome, Shirley. Thank you. Yes. Thanks so much. We're here. Thank you. We're live in Dallas, Texas on the Valder BB Show. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm going to start with Dr. Stein. Dr. Stein, let's talk about what AML is and what are mutations for my audience to get a better understanding. Sure. So AML, or acute myeloid leukemia, is a difficult-to-treat kind of cancer that occurs in the blood and bone marrow. And it's one of the most common types of leukemia that's diagnosed in adults. You know, in fact, it's estimated about 21,000 people in the United States will be diagnosed with AML this year. And mutations are changes in the DNA of a cell that can cause certain cells to grow out of control. And those specific mutations can sometimes be targeted with specific treatments. Is there a certain group that is... Uh, uh, more prevalent to have this, or is this just spread across the um, population? You know, the, the most, the biggest risk factor for getting acute myeloid leukemia is aging, something that none of us can prevent. So the median age of diagnosis is 68 years old, and, and uh, the incidence of AML goes up as, as people age. It's pretty rare to see it in younger people, much more common to see it in older people. Are there any targeted treatments for this now that it's a, you know, a known uh, blood cancer disease? Yeah, you know, and this has really been, there are, and this has really been a, a revolution in how we think about treating cancer and treating AML specifically. You know, we used to just give everyone traditional chemotherapy, which killed cells that were good and killed cells that were bad. Um, but what targeted therapy allows you to do is it allows you to give a specific treatment that targets a specific mutation and only targets the cancer cell. It's like finding the right key for the right lock and putting that key in the lock, causing the cancer cells to go away. I'm going to switch to Shirley for a minute. Thanks for being here, Shirley. I'd like to, for you to briefly talk about your diagnosis. Ten years ago, I was diagnosed with MDS, myelodysplasic syndrome, and it progressed to AML, acute myeloid leukemia. I was a retired university professor at the time, and I took it on as a major research project. But it was very, very personal to me. And I quickly realized that I had to be my own advocate because no one else felt the same about this and no one was going to do the job for me. Uh, I kept blood draws, weekly and I watched them sink lower and lower and I realized at one point that my oncologist had said you have four to six months to live and that was a shock consulted with some top specialists and one of them said Shirley you need to get a biomarker test because you may have a mutation so that was my next step Thank you so much for sharing that. Dr. Stein, as you talk about uh, the biomarker mutation, can you, <coughs> excuse me, what role does the mutation have in, in finding it, defining it? What does it have in this diagnosis that can help people? Yeah, so this mutational testing that, that, um, that Shirley had, and which is also known as molecular profiling or, or biomarker testing, um, it really has given doctors and scientists a better understanding of how cancer operates in the body. And when you test for mutations, an example of this would be testing for an IDH1 mutation, which is present in about 10% of AML cases. It really helps your healthcare team and your oncologist develop a specific treatment plan for your particular kind of cancer generally, and what we're talking about today in this blood cancer, acute myeloid leukemia. I want my audience to know that Dr. Stern is an oncologist here talking about it. Dr. Stern, for people who have these questions, of course we have to start with our primary doctor and then we get to go to an oncologist doing different steps. But where do they start? How, how do they maybe answer these nagging questions they may have? Yeah, you know, when, when a person is initially diagnosed with having um, acute myeloid leukemia, they'll get referred, as you know, to an oncologist or a hematologist. And what it's gonna be really important for the patient to do is to advocate for themselves. 
and to ask their oncologist and their oncology team, you know, are you going to be doing biomarker testing? When are you going to do it? How long will it take for me to receive the results? And most importantly, what are my treatment options going to be and how are they going to change based on the results of the biomarker testing? You can learn a little bit more about this at servier.us backslash biomarker testing. That website is servier.us backslash biomarker testing. This is going to take quite a bit of uh, reading and understanding, but I want to thank you, Dr. Stein, and Shirley for stopping by the Bounder BB Show to talk about this. Thank you very much. Thanks so thank much. Thank you. Most fascinating authors, all because I love a good book. This summer, I've partnered with WPS for BB Summer Book Giveaway. We're giving away New York Times bestsellers and award-winning books, books that inspire me and I'm sure they'll inspire you. To be eligible to win a copy of Jesus Can Give You a New Life, answer this question. What is God's greatest gift to mankind? You'll find the answer in John 3.16 of the Bible. Send your response to the email at the bottom of the screen. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you for the next BB Summer Book Giveaway. <laughs>